What's up guys, one of the most important tools in your toolkit should be the compression gauge. With the compression gauge you can check the health of your motor to find out if there's blow by through your piston rings or if there's something wrong with your valves on your head. And a compression test can be done on any engine guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it doesn't matter. As long as you have the correct adapter to plug into where the spark plug area is, then you should be good. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing a compression test on the four cylinder in the Honda Civic. First thing to do is start your car and warm it up to operating temperature. With this car, the gauge actually reads a little low, but this is operating temperature right here. I'm gonna need to pull the fuel pump fuse, and it is located right here in the fuse box. You can see that in this case, the fuel pump fuse is right here. And the fuel pump should not prime when I crank over the engine because I don't want fuel spewing into the cylinders while I'm cranking. So how do you know which is cylinder one, two, three, or four? Is it coming from this direction or that direction? Well, typically it is coming from where your belt and accessories are. So counting back, cylinder one is right here. One, two, three, and four. Take out the spark plug wires and spark plugs for all the cylinders. I'm gonna test cylinder one first. Just a heads up guys, compression gauges might read differently from one another. Check with the factory service manual pressures to see if your pressures are within tolerances and if the cylinders vary greatly from one another because if they do, then there's an issue. For the first test, I'm only going to crank four to five times. This is because it's a four stroke engine, so I want to record the compression results for one cycle on this cylinder. Before you crank the engine, make sure that you step on the gas pedal all the way down so that the throttle body is opened and air can be consumed by the cylinders while cranking. With four cranks, I'm looking at about 180 PSI. For the second test, I'm going to crank the engine until the compression gauge reaches its maximum. In my case, I'm going to crank around 12 times, which should be more than enough. With 12 cranks, I'm looking at just above 210 PSI. After doing a compression test on the cylinder, press the relief valve on the side to release the pressure and unscrew the gauge out. Continue the same process on the next cylinder or refer back to step 4 in this video for the other cylinders. Now you know the process, so the clips after this, I'm only going to show you the results for cylinders 2, 3, and 4. With 4 cranks, I'm looking at about 170 PSI for cylinder number 2. With 12 cranks, I'm looking at about 205 PSI. With 4 cranks, I'm looking at about 180 PSI. With 12 cranks, I'm looking at right above 210 PSI. With four cranks, I'm looking at right above 180 PSI. With 12 cranks, I'm looking at right about 220 PSI, which is high and it may be due to carbon buildup in this cylinder. After compression testing all the cylinders, just put everything back in reverse order and you are good to go. And that's how you do a compression test on an engine. I'm quite surprised because this engine is over 19 years old and the cylinders were within a 5% variance, so it is pretty healthy for its age. The next video is gonna be the car review video. So now that I know and you know that the engine is healthy, this is gonna be a pretty good car review because <laughs> it's a great example. So that's gonna be the next video. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one.